So this video is on child abuse, or non-accidental trauma as it is sometimes referred to. But I don't believe in using these euphemisms. It's, it's a heinous crime, and so we should call it what it is, which is child abuse. So let's look at some of the pathognomic fractures that you shouldn't miss in the emergency room that are uh, indicative of child abuse. So let's say we have this uh, guy here, bad guy, caregiver, who's frustrated with the child and then starts shaking him back and forth. So this is really shaken baby syndrome. So what happens? The head is flailing back and forth, the legs are flailing back and forth, and there's compressive injury here on the torso. So you can also get some whiplash type motion over here. So what happens then with this? The baby's brain is bounced back and forth within the, the skull, and so you can get intracranial injury there and even subdural hematomas. And if you were to do an eye exam on these patients, you'd probably also notice uh, some retinal hemorrhages. The compressive forces back here are going to cause rib fractures, and since they're in the back, you're going to see posterior rib fractures. And with the legs flailing back and forth, you're going to see one of two different kinds of fractures. The whiplash motion here is going to cause this to move uh, much more violently than this, and you might even get uh, these ligaments tearing off pieces of these bones. And so then you'll see these corner fractures of the metaphysis, uh, these chip fractures, so they're called metaphyseal chip fractures or corner fractures. Now the forces may go the other way as well. And it, instead of tearing through the top, it might tear through the bottom, even ripping possibly through the growth plate, causing what looks like a bucket handle. And so these are called bucket handle fractures. So you can see how this looks like a bucket handle. So these are just a bunch of the sequelae you can get from shaken baby syndrome. So let's now take a look at what some of these look like on x-ray. So this is a chest x-ray, so obviously we're going to be looking at the posterior ribs, and you can see here the, the fractures right about through there. On this blow-up of it, you can see it much more clearly. And these can be easily missed if you're not looking for them. Now here's that corner fracture that we were talking about. So these were originally described by a physician who noticed these fractures in kids with uh, subdural hematomas, which we know is another uh, indicator for child abuse. And you can tell that these, again, are also very subtle. They're going to be easy to miss, unless you know what you're looking for. So when you order your skeletal surveys, make sure to look here for the corner fracture. Now here we have our bucket handle fracture. And you remember the mechanism is similar to that of a corner fracture. And uh, since both legs are going to be uh, usually involved, they're typically going to be bilateral. And you'll see them commonly in the tibia, the distal femur, and the proximal humerus. Now, these x-rays obviously depict skull fractures. And while they're common in child abuse, they can happen from just normal trauma as well. And so patterns you'll see in that would suggest child abuse are multiple fractures or eggshell fractures like you're cracking an egg uh, occipital impression fractures like you're denting the back of the occiput as you're hitting their head or facial fractures crossing sutures this x-ray here on this side this one just pisses me off because look at look at this kid look at all these fractures his, his head is shattered um, this is not this is from a, a kid who had died after being thrown from a height. This one, on the other side, it's a little more subtle, but you could see the fractures there. So these fractures are actually crossing suture lines, and so you can see that they, uh, these are also indicative of uh, abuse. You can get another look at it now without all my scribblings on it. And just like the skull fractures, mid-shaft fractures don't necessarily have to be due to abuse. But here's where the history comes into play. So let's say this was a one-month-old 
who the mom said rolled out of bed and uh, fell onto the floor and then sustained this fracture here. And that doesn't make developmental sense, right? Because a one-month-old is not going to uh, roll and fall out of a bed. And the force required to break this bone, to break the femur, is pretty significant. So just falling out of a bed is really unlikely to cause that. Now on this side, we see the spiral fracture. You can see how it kind of, as it tapers off this way, it gets lighter and lighter. Um, and this is usually a result of some sort of twisting force. And so again, that's very unlikely to happen from just falling off of a bed. And go ahead and take another look at it without my drawings on it. Now, what's uh, noticeable about this fracture is, first of all, look at the horrible angulation that's here. You know that this bone was not properly set by an orthopedist or emergency physician. Nobody set this bone. And then all this extra stuff here, this is callus formation, meaning it's already starting to heal. So what does this mean? There was an obvious fracture here, and nobody sought care for it. Uh, so this should be indicative of abuse as well. So again, you can see here the callus formation on this horribly angulated bone. This is fracture healing. So now I'm just going to give you some rules of thumb that came from a systematic review in the British Medical Journal about when to suspect physical abuse. And this should, you should suspect this whenever you have a kid, especially one under 18 months of age, with no overt history of trauma or they don't have something that causes their bones to be fragile like osteogenesis imperfecta. So the first thing is multiple fractures. That's going to be more common in physical abuse than in kids who are not abused. Rib fractures, uh, kids with those are going to have a 7 in 10 chance of having been abused. Femoral fractures uh, in kids, especially these young ones, have a 1 in 3 or 1 in 4 chance, especially if they're not walking yet. A kid with a humerus fracture has about a 50% chance of being abused, especially if they're under three years old. And mid-shaft fractures are more likely to be abuse, whereas supracondylar fractures are probably some sort of accidental trauma. Skull fractures have, especially in infants or toddlers, have about a one in three chance uh, of coming from abuse. And particular skull fractures are not necessarily associated with abuse. But remember, multiple skull fractures or the eggshell fracture, you should, that should raise some red flags. So if something doesn't seem right in the history, it's not developmentally uh, appropriate, or you have some of these things going on, then that raises your red flag. Then I'd get a skeletal survey. And now you know some of the things that you want to look at on the skeletal survey. And that's it. That's our child abuse uh, x-rays lecture. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and email me or put them down there in the comments. Thanks. Bye.